His hands grew damp with sweat as they tightened around the leather steering wheel. He could see the bridge lights up ahead as they blended together into one big white blur. The traffic was slowing down, which meant he'd have an extra minute or two to fully digest the finality of what he was about to do. Would it all end immediately upon impact, or would he remain conscious as the cold waters of the Hudson River filled his lungs? Jameson Philippi was a 35-year-old successful entrepreneur from Minnesota, making over half a million dollars a year on Amazon. His Instagram page was on point, a well-curated feed of smiling party pics, envy-worthy travel posts, and inspirational quotes. Hashtag work hard, play hard. Hashtag focus on your destiny. But really, it felt more like, hashtag, is this all there is? He merged into the right lane, pulled up to where he could get a clear view of the dark waters down below and shifted his car into park. His chest was beating hard and heavy with a piercing pain and emptiness that he was no longer willing to bear. This was it. Jameson had been burnt out, lost and disconnected. His constant grind to fit in, keep up and stand out had only left him feeling disconnected and isolated. But Jameson was not alone. There are approximately 1.5 million suicide attempts each year in the U.S. 45,000 of those are successful, so to speak. We have not seen numbers like this since World War II. So what are we missing? From a logical perspective, life has never been easier. I mean, we can 3D print human body parts, furnish an entire house from our phone. We can compose music in real time with someone on the other side of the planet. And did you know there are cafes where you can pay to drink coffee and pet cats by the hour? I mean, it's a great time to be alive. Yet, the numbers don't lie. But we sure do. Oh, we lie. Just like Jameson, we put on our game face for the world. We post photos of our fabulous family vacation while our kids are fighting in the room next door. We say things like, we should get together sometime, when we really don't mean it. We introduce ourselves and then automatically default to our stream of questioning. So where are you from? What do you do? We love that question, don't we? What do you do? What the hell do I do? 10 years ago, I found myself asking that same question. Like many new moms, I had been attempting to hold on to some form of a career without drowning in a sippy cup of mommy guilt. I had found some small success in product design and home decor, I mean. I was doing what I went to school for, but there is still that uneasy restlessness, that feeling like I was meant to do more. It was 2009 and my friend had been bugging me to join this new website called Facebook. But it wasn't until a year later that I came across a trailer for a documentary that would change the course of my life as I knew it. You see, Bernadette was a 30-year-old woman living with the same disease my sister and I had grown up with, called Charcot Marie Tooth. Now, the ironic part here is that neither one of us have ever had a cavity in our entire lives. CMT is no dental disorder. Its funny name comes from the three scientists who discovered it, but there's nothing funny about it. It's as common as MS, yet because of its odd name and hereditary nature, it's been coined the biggest disease that no one's ever heard of. But there was Bernadette on screen, unfiltered, leg braces, scooter and all. She was fearless and unapologetic. She had a girlfriend, she smoked weed and she said fuck a lot. And my inner whisper went from, is this all there is to, 
oh, hell yes, I want to be brave like that. And then I did what anybody else would. I stalked her on Facebook. I introduced myself, told her how grateful I was for her courage and how wonderful this film would be for the community. And when it finally debuted, my sister and I were there front and center at the premieres. We watched as all the comments poured in online. Bernadette, you have no idea what this film has done for me and my family. We've always been so ashamed to talk about this disease, but now we're organizing a support group in our town and we're fundraising together for research. There are hundreds of posts like this. I was just one of the many people who had been inspired by this woman. But the new me, the new me was ready to fight my CMT head on. I started going to yoga classes, working out, showing my leg braces out in public, running for the first time on an anti-gravity treadmill, and writing vulnerable articles for websites like Elephant Journal. I even started volunteering for the same nonprofit who had funded Bernadette's film, the Hereditary Neuropathy Foundation. It was empowering and, and liberating. And over the next 10 years, Bernadette went from being just an inspiring face on my screen to becoming one of my dearest and closest friends. It's pretty amazing if you really think about it. One person can choose to be brave and truly show themselves to the world. No script, no filter, just their raw pain and warrior spirit. And when they do, they become a lighthouse for others to find their way out of the dark. And that is exactly what Bernadette did for me. She sparked my purpose. Today, Bernadette and I are coworkers. And together with an incredible team and international network of partners, we serve the Hereditary Neuropathy Foundation and the 2.6 million people living worldwide with CMT. Instead of designing furniture, I get to design patient workshops, presentations for the FDA, and even get to collaborate with top fashion schools on adaptive clothing line, all while traveling the world. There are no more Sunday night blues, no more knots in my stomach as I pull up to a job that does not bring me joy. The work I do now no longer drains me, but rather has become a source of nourishment. So it got me thinking, how much shame, depression, and suicide could we prevent if we all tap deeper into our purpose? Not just our skills, talents, or even passions, but the whys that make them matter. We may not all have a Bernadette in our lives, but if you can answer yes to this next question, then you already have everything you need to start. By a show of hands, who here has ever experienced a deeply painful event or circumstance, one that fundamentally changed who they are today? That's pretty much all of us, right? So now what? We repurpose our pain. What if we could take all of those parts of us that we wish we could throw away and instead we turn them into our life's most beautiful projects? Instead of lugging around all that shame and pain, what if we set it down and put it to work? But first, we must start with step one. We must unpack. In order to create something new and beautiful, we must first assess our materials. What are we working with? Now, this will require bravery and self-reflection. Many of us have buried our pain so deep down inside that we don't even remember what it looks like. We avoid it completely because, frankly, it hurts. But I urge you to try. What did I have to sift through to find my purpose? Decades of being stared at, ignorant name calling, rude comments about the way I walked, two paralyzed feet, 10 floppy fingers, and hundreds of painful and humiliating falls. You get the gist here. This part sucks. 
but our pain serves no one unless we are willing to share it with the world. We tend to think of it as something to avoid, but really pain creates the very junction at which we connect with humanity. From pain grows empathy, and from empathy grows understanding. So be fearless with it. Speak your truth. And when you do, you will give others the permission to do the same. Step two, find your tribe. Social media has put millions of people at our fingertips. All we have to do is type in a few keywords or hashtags and voila, we have our pick of community organizations, schools, hospitals. Okay, but then what? We listen. What is our tribe looking for? What resources do they need? Maybe there's a doctor or a website we can recommend. Maybe there's a book or film we can share. Maybe they just need to hear that they are not alone. This type of social listening is the pulse of our tribe. And when we place our fingers on it, we tap into all of the different ways we can help support each other. Trust me, we do not have to know the answers. And in no way should we ever pretend like we do. Our job is to simply listen and connect. So be bold. Message people first. Set up a phone call or FaceTime them. And if they live locally, grab some coffee together. Now, if you're an introvert like me, then yes, this will be outside of your comfort zone. But that is exactly when purpose kicks in. It's meant to be bigger than our pride, our fears, and our insecurities. Allow it to give you the courage to do crazy things like talk to strangers or, I don't know, give a TEDx talk. Step three. Okay, on the count of three, let's all take a nice, big, deep breath together. Ready? One, two, three. Now repeat after me. Holy shit, we're alive. <laughs> I borrowed this one from my all-time favorite entrepreneur, Mickey Agarwal, who can often be seen wearing these very words on her baseball cap as she inspires the planet. She reminds us that from the time of our college graduation, we only have about 20,000 days to live. Now that's enough time to make a real impact on this planet, but it's not enough time to be worrying about what other people are thinking about us. So do not let this number scare you. Instead, let it drive you. And whenever you're doubting yourself or your purpose, remember that our time here is temporary and precious. We must act with urgency. Step four, talk the talk. In order to manifest our purpose, we must be willing to share it with the world. Our purpose serves no one unless we are speaking enthusiastically about it to everyone we meet. Chances are that someone will need or knows somebody who needs what you have. They may be that connection you've been looking for to take you to the next level. They may be a future collaborator, partner, or donor. They may even spark an idea in you that you never would have thought of on your own. This is where the creative magic happens. Remember that humans are biologically wired to serve, and we will always want to be part of a good underdog story. Step five, give it away. Each year, approximately 75% of Americans donate zero or less than one hour of their time to a nonprofit or civic organization. Now, what kind of impact could we have if we just swapped out one Netflix show a week with 60 minutes of purpose? I was called foolish for working for free, but the reality was that I was interviewing for the job of a lifetime. And when a position finally opened up, there was no questioning my work ethic or dedication. We were a stronger team together with a shared mission. You see, the time you give away is a testament of your passion. It is proof that your purpose outweighs your paycheck. Our world needs more people repurposing their pain. We need more individuals 
willing to turn their wounds inside out rather than burying them deep inside. And if my story is enough to help just one person take action and do just that, well, then it's all been well worth it. As for Jameson, he could have taken action on that bridge too. He could have started his car back up and drove home. Maybe in the midst of that dark moment, he could have realized that he had the power to help others suffering from burnout and depression. Maybe he could have become someone else's lighthouse. That was 10 months ago. And that is exactly what he did. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to my friend, Jameson Philippi. Holy shit, we're alive. Thank you.